Hi everyone, my name is John Monticello, I'm the second flutist with the Palm Beach Symphony Orchestra, and I am here to talk to you about flute fundamentals. In this first video, I want to talk a little bit about tone production and breathing, um, how to get the best sound that you can out of your instrument at all times, and ultimately to create the most gorgeous resonant sound that we can, you want there to be an absence of tension, as little tension as possible in that sense. Um, tension is oftentimes the enemy of music, it's the enemy of tone, it's the enemy of spontaneity. If you're tense, if you're nervous, if you're tight, all of a sudden your sound is going to be all of those things. Okay, so, so for my first example in the approach to breathing and to getting rid of tension um, is an excerpt from Marcel Moise's Book de la Sonorité. Um, this book is essentially a primer on tone production the sonority of sound, if for those of you who may speak French. Um, basically creating the most beautiful sound that you can in all of the registers. And he takes you through several exercises. What I love about this book in particular is that it is so flexible in its use uh, and its application in how we approach playing the flute in more than just sonority. Um, so in this example, um, he takes you through an exercise that's meant to kind of create a line. Um, but what I'm going to use it for today is to practice quick breathing and quick breathing without any tension. Um, so before you begin to play, I want you to be seated in this position, you know, have your center of gravity a little bit more forward on the chair. You don't ever want to be slouching back or slouching forward. I know it's comfortable. I know what it's like in school day after day. That's the last thing you feel like doing is sitting up like this. But one of the main things that that does is it collapses your lung, your, your rib cage, and your lung capacity is inhibited because of it. So when you're sitting up as straight as you can, I don't want you to be all of a sudden tense. You sit up with confidence. When you think of someone who walks in a room with a high level of confidence, you think all of a sudden, hmm, and what does that do? But it makes you lift your chest cavity here, open up, your lungs are all of a sudden very free to fill to capacity, and your shoulders are not tense. Meanwhile, if you think sit up straight, all of a sudden tension arises, but if you think just confidence, sit with confidence, hmm, hmm. Um, so that's the first step. So then take a deep breath as low as you can, and a very slow breath. When people say take a deep breath, we think that we're going to go underwater. And when you, <gasps> again, there's the tension in your shoulders, right? Absolutely the last thing that we want. So take a deep, slow breath. I want you to imagine that you're filling from the bottom up. It helps if you start through your nose and then open. And keep an open throat when you breathe. Tying this into tone production. When we're playing the flute, a lot of the times we think the higher the register, the harder we have to blow, or the more air that we have to blow. Yes, but what I want you to think about differently in that is that the temperature of the air that you blow. So you can blow very cold air, you know, almost like you're whistling. Whereas if you're warming your hands, if your hands are cold, that's the breath that I want you to play with almost exclusively on the flute. And you'll notice a large difference in sound quality if you blow versus Now, you're going to say, okay, but if I blow like I'm not going to get any sound out of the flute. Um, that is where the lips come in. One of the main goals here is to get you to not tense your throat. And if you're blowing a very warm, very warming airstream, there is no tension. Your throat is very wide. Your mouth is very open. That lack of tension is what we're after. So what I'd like to do now is to take you through number two, and I want you to really listen to the difference when I blow with a cold airstream and when I blow with a warm airstream. So I'll start first with the cold. I'll do that with the warm. And I'll try to change very little of what I did on the shawas. Quite a 
slight of differences. Um, another good exercise for this is simply going through your octaves. So if you start on a low G, for example, now try and slur that up to a middle G as smoothly as you can without changing very much here, without blowing much more air. Try and do it all with the direction of your airstream. So I'm gonna, I like to think of the airstream as being very far downwards. So it's a warm, fairly slow airstream that you aim downwards past the flute. Um, if you think straight across, you'll probably get a much harder sound that will be likely to crack up. So if you're someone who has problems with the tone cracking between the octaves, chances are that you're blowing too fast and too far forward. And if you direct your airstream downwards, think of the space between your teeth and think of your upper lip as the, the flap that directs the air, whichever way. Um, keep the space between your teeth open and blow further down. Something like that. This is a very good exercise to teach you flexibility in your upper lip, and consistency of your airstream. Very important things, both of which are not helped by any tension. Now, going back to exercise number two from the Moise book, I'd like to make it a little bit more difficult as an exercise for all of you now, to tie together the warm air and breathing without introducing any tension. But it's essentially a quarter note tied over a bar line to a dotted half note and then another quarter note tied over the bar line to a dotted half note. So you have four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three. What I'd like to do is to introduce a breath between each dotted half note and the following quarter. So four, one, two, three. Four, one, two, three. Four, one, two, three. So you're delaying the fourth beat, but you're breathing. And I want that breath to not be agitated, to not introduce tension, and to stop you, to really make sure that you're also focusing on the beauty of the tone that you're producing. Um, in this case, if you work with a metronome, say if you put it on a quarter note equals 60, just take an extra beat after the third beat to breathe, and then continue. Four, one, three, breath, four, one, two, three. So you'll almost be doing this exercise in five instead of in four. I'll give you an example of what I mean here. By the time you get to here, you might notice I have plenty of air to go, which is a good sign because it means that you're breathing deeply and you're breathing quite significant amounts of air that can get you through a very long line. So if you notice that, feel free to take a breath every two or every three um, exercises. This will kind of help you gauge also your breathing. Breathe intelligently. Breathe before you absolutely need to. And if you can avoid it. Don't breathe when you're already on empty because that will all of a sudden make you <laughs> take very shallow breaths and introduce tension slowly but surely. And then you'll notice that your sound will suffer, you'll get a little bit thinner, you'll get a little more tired because you're working so much harder due to the tension. So that is my first lesson. I hope you've enjoyed it. Um, any questions feel free to write to me. I'll ask that they include my email um, underneath or maybe I'll include it at the end of the video. But there we go. Until next time.